There's a lot more you can do with notifications, but chances are the thing you most want to do is act on the user's response to show one or more options alongside your alert and respond to the user's choice. In our code, we already set the category identifier string for our notification. This is a text string that identifies a type of alert. We can now use that same text string to create buttons for the user to choose from, and iOS will show them when any notifications of that type are shown. This is done using two new classes, UN Notification Action creates an individual button for the user's tap, and UN Notification Category groups multiple buttons together under a single identifier. For this technique project, we're going to create one button, Show Me More, that will cause the app to launch when tapped. We're also going to set the delegate property of the user notification center to be self, meaning that any alert-based messages that get sent will be routed to our view controller to be handled. Now, creating a notification action requires three parameters. First, an identifier, which is a unique text string that gets sent to you when the button's tapped. Second, a title, which is what users see in the interface. And third, options, which describe any special options that relate to the action. You can choose from authentication required, destructive, and foreground. Once you have as many actions as you want, you group them together into a single notification category and give it the same identifier you used with the notification. And that's it. Let's write some code now. I'll add some space below here and say func register categories. First, we'll get our center again by saying let center equals a un user notification center dot current. And we'll assign its delegate to be us, our current view controller. So any messages from the notifications get reported back to us. Of course, to do that, we're going to make our view controller conform to the UN user notification center delegate, like this. Uh, view controller inherits from UI view controller, comma, UN user notification center delegate, like that. Next, let's make an action that says, tell me more. So in our method down here, below delegate, we'll say, let show equals, a UN notification action with the identifier. This is a string of your choosing. It's only internal, but it identifies it to you so you can know what was tapped. I'll say show. Our title, this is user facing, will be tell me more. And for options, this will do dot foreground, which means when this button is tapped, launch the app immediately. We'll now wrap that in a notification category. This also has an identifier, and it should match something you've used with the category identifier up here when you make your notification. So I'll say, let category equals a UN notification category. There are a few options here that look very similar. You want the one that says just category object contain the specified actions and options. Our identifier is going to be alarm, that's the type we've used earlier. For our actions, I'll specify an array of just our show action. For intent identifiers, I'll do an empty array. And options, I'll do an empty array. And finally, we're going to register that with our notification center. We'll say center.set notification categories is an array of our category pass that in so it can be used with notifications. Now there are two empty arrays being passed in for these parameters, intent identifiers and options. We don't need these things. Therefore, we want more advanced notifications. For example, intent identifiers lets us specify if we want to have intents, which is an iOS way of registering things like uh, talking to Siri, for example. You could pass them in here as well as your notifications. And this options array lets us pass in more advanced options, for example, uh, do we want to allow CarPlay support? Do we want to show the title, even if the user's disabled that for hiding it when a, the device is locked? Uh, do you want a custom dismiss action and similar? And if that option is actually an empty array by default, so you can actually del delete that last parameter if you want to have it just like that. Anyway, that will register our example category in there, which means it will connect it up to this notification we made earlier. It has the same category identifier, same alarm identifier in there. Now you can call this register categories method whenever you want. But in this project, the safest place is probably right at the beginning of the schedule local method. That would be up here. 
we'd say register categories. So iOS knows immediately what alarm means. So now I've registered the alarm category with a single button. The last thing to do is, is implement the did receive method for the notification center. This is called when the users launched our app as a result of a notification. And it's called on our view controller because we are the notification center's delegate. So it's down to us to decide how to handle the notification. Now, as you can see, we attach some custom data to the user info dictionary for our notification. And this is where it gets handed back. It's your chance to link the notification to whatever app content it relates to. When the user acts a notification, you can read its action identifier property to see what they did. We have a single button, maybe one down here, with the show identifier. But there's also UN notification default action identifier that gets sent when the user swipe the notification to unlock the device and launch the app. So we can pull out our user info, then decide what to do based on what the user chose. The method also accepts a completion closure you should call once you've finished doing whatever you need to do. This might be used later on, so it's marked with the escaping keyword. Let's write did receive now. I'll make some space below register categories and write did receive. We'll get back this long method here. Please use co-completion because it's quite long. The first thing we'll do is pull out the buried user info dictionary. We'll say let user info equals the response from the user dot notification then we pass into it dot the request we made dot content dot user info now we can try and read out our custom string we'll say if let custom data equals user info custom data as question mark string so if we can read the custom data key inside our user info dictionary, and its value is a string. Now this should be there, we passed in visbuzz as a string for custom data. If that works, we'll print out custom data received, string interpolation, custom data. Then we're going to switch on the action identifier from the notification. We'll say switch response dot action identifier. What do they do with the notification? Now, if we get back a special case of UN notification default action identifier, it means the user swiped to unlock. So we're going to print out default identifier. But if we get back our custom show action, which we named up here, that means the user tapped our show more info button explicitly and we should take the appropriate action. So we'll do down here, print show more information. Boom. And for all other cases, we're going to just break out of there. Now, regardless of whether we can read custom data or not, we must call the completion handler when we're done. So we'll call completion handler like that. Now remember, this thing is marked escaping, which means it can escape the current method and be used later on. For example, we might do some extra work here, make a network request, uh, show an alert, ask for feedback from the user, and stash away this completion handler in a property for use later on. And then call it in a minute, two minutes, five minutes, doesn't matter. But at some point, it needs to be called to tell iOS we've finished handling the notification response. So now being well, I'll press Command R again to build and run our code. So I'll press Schedule again, then press Command L to lock the device. Boom, there's the notification. And when I swipe out here to view it, and press View, we'll see Tell Me More. And when that's pressed, it will launch our application. And you see down here in Xcode, Custom Data Received Fizz Buzz. And below that, Show More Information exactly what we asked, we printed out in our code here and here. So it's all worked correctly.